Hey, welcome everybody to Brian's Vinyl Records, the podcast. I'm Brian Thomas, and I'm your host. And I'd like to welcome you to this episode, episode number one, of this, what I hope to be a fun, relaxing, and enjoying podcast. So I just want to give you a quick overview of what we plan to do here at Brian's Vinyl Records, the podcast, and uh, what kind of things you can look forward to, hopefully, in the future on this show. So as I said, I am Brian Thomas. I will go over my kind of history with music and vinyl records in a little bit. But first, I want to tell you what we're going to do on this podcast. Uh, If you follow my blog, which is briansvinylrecords.blogspot.com, you'll know that I like to review some of the vinyl packaging of different kinds of records that I purchase. And I also like to look back at some of the vinyl records that I have in my collection and what they mean to me. I kind of want to use that blog for those kind of things as well as this podcast to talk about some of my favorite vinyl purchases that I have and other things like that. You'll also notice that we did a feature on there for Def Leppard's Hysteria album called Tracks. And after speaking with my good buddy Jay, who is part of the Time Out Need More Popcorn blog and podcast, uh, we decided that maybe it would be better to use a podcast venue instead of a blog venue because the discussion can sound more natural and flow a little better when you're speaking in a conversation on a podcast than it can when you read it on a blog sheet. So you can expect to see... um, episodes here every couple of months or so where we're going to analyze and break down some of our favorite and maybe even some of our not so favorite albums that we grew up loving and look at them on a track by track basis. So I'm looking forward to that. So you'll find that here as well as just some random podcast episodes about different topics that whatever's floating my boat at the time and Hopefully it'll be enjoyable for you as a listener as it is for me as a content editor and contributor uh, getting you some of these stories out there. So that's kind of what the gist of Brian's Vinyl Records, the podcast, is going to be. And who knows, it might grow into other things. Um, I'm hoping to maybe interview some of my favorite people who I've shared this, this vinyl experience with Uh, down the road as well, get their stories with vinyl, um, talk about different things like that. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I hope in in any retrospect that we all have fun with this podcast. Everybody enjoys the podcast and we'll continue to tune in and read the blog as well. So here we go. Let's get into some things. So why don't we go ahead and talk about my experience and what drives me in the vinyl records situation. So for anybody who wonders, I didn't grow up with vinyl per se. My dad did have vinyl records in the house, but at the time when music was really coming into my life, the mediums that were mostly used were the cassette tape and then the dawn of the CD as well. So a lot of the music that I grew up listening to, while there was quite a few Beatles albums and things like that where we did listen to the vinyls a lot of it was probably cd based so when i go through my collection a lot of the albums that i grew up listening to especially things like air clapton and the beatles and cream and uh, different things like that that comes from the cds that we had and so now i have those on a vinyl format but i grew up listening to a lot of it on cd music was huge in my house we almost always had music playing which is i think awesome and um a lot of my favorite memories growing up have a lot to do with music being involved so um, we'll get into some of that but i grew up in the cd era like I said, cassette tapes and CDs were basically what I was buying most of my L, uh, LPs or albums on. So what brought me to vinyl? What, you know, why, if I grew up on CDs, and I do have a stack of CDs out there. I have over a thousand CDs stored now. And that doesn't include any of the ones I've gotten rid of over the years and things like that. Almost everything I had was CD. And we live in a digital age now. So a lot of my music I've ripped into an MP3 format so that I can then listen to it. Uh, wherever I go. So I did rip most, almost every CD I have to a MP3 and did that for a long time. But I think any audio file out there or anyone who loves vinyl records will tell you that the experience is just not the same when you're listening to an MP3. So flash to uh, probably around 2014, I would say. And I had just started a new job at the company I work for now. And I I met a lot of interesting people, and one of those persons was uh, 
big into music, big, big into music and, and a lot into audio. Um, he would always bring in all sorts of different gadgets for listening to music on his phone uh, that make it sound more like a medium that you would hear on a CD or, or a record. And he would tell me all sorts of things about these devices, which I thought was really cool. And one day asked if I was interested in going with him to a new record store that had just opened up nearby the place we worked. And I said, sure, why not? And uh, that was a changing experience for me. So I hadn't been in a music store at that point, other than like a Best Buy or a Target in ages. So the cool thing was walking into that music store and just being surrounded, surrounded by physical media. And I think that pulled me in a lot because I remember growing up, what's the first thing you did when you bought yourself a new cassette or a new CD? You ripped it open and immediately went to the packaging, the booklet, you know, and the cassette kit case. I remember when I'd buy a cassette and if I opened it up and the cassette cover didn't unfold, I was upset because I loved being able to unfold that cassette cover and read everything on there. The lyric sheets, the, the credits, the writers. I thought that was the coolest part, the pictures that were involved in there. Same with the CD. If the booklet was just a sheet or a, a one-fold sheet, I, it was disappointing to me. Having the ability to open it up and page through everything, look at all the pictures, see all the lyrics there, that made that experience even better. And then to pop the CD or the tape in and listen to it and follow along, I... That is what I missed about music. And I think that's what's missing with music now is that physical connection to the songs, to the music, to the albums, to the artists. Uh, you know, you can only see when you look on your MP3 player or your streaming media, you only see the cover. You don't see what's behind the cover. You don't see the lyric sheets. You don't see the photographs that were taken for the album physical media anymore. And that was part of the experience. And walking into a record store and looking at all these, you know, 13 inch, 12 inch records sitting there in these beautiful covers, used covers, everything, and being able to physically hold that piece of music in my hand and look at it and, uh, you know, flip the cover over and look at the back, pull the, the vinyl out of the sleeve and look at it. I fell in love again with owning music at that point. And I walked out of the store that day and I believe I bought three records that day and I didn't even have a record player at the time, but I had the physical media and I was excited about it. I brought it home and I put it away. I put it on the shelf uh, because I I couldn't do anything with it. And luckily, I was able to get a hold of my dad who had a couple record players, turntables, that were doing nothing and he didn't need any more. And so I was able to go over to his house after a couple weekends and bring home a record player that he didn't know if it worked or not. Unfortunately for me, it, it did not work very well. Um, the needle on it was badly damaged from where it was stored. And so that same friend that took me to the record store then took me to a place called The Needle Doctor here in Minnesota. And I was able to tell them what I had for a turntable. And they were able to sell me a you know, $35 uh, needle replacement cartridge. And uh, you know, it's not great or anything, but I was able to then listen to my records. So, uh, you know, at that point... I was done. I was I was locked and loaded. I was ready to rock. And there was nothing that was going to stop me uh, from listening to music the way I loved it again. And, and what I, I really love about the vinyl experience is you put it on and you don't skip songs. You listen to the album usually at least side by one side at a time in the whole. And we don't do that anymore. People have the attention span that just isn't there. They skip to the next song or they only play the songs they love. And you lose that experience of what an album is. And so having the physical media once again is, is to me is just awesome because I, I'm listening to albums again. I'm listening to the whole thing as the artist wanted it to be. And I think that's why vinyl 
is in a resurgence right now is because people want to have that connection to their music that they used to. Even if it's just playing in the background while you're doing something else, just having it there, listening to the sounds come out of the speakers, it's phenomenal. So I told you that it was around 2014, I would say, um, maybe 2015. I, I can't remember exactly when I started up. I, I want to say it was 14. And uh, at the time I started and I had um, two records in my possession already. I had an ACDC Razor's Edge record that I bought in the 90s. And I had a um, Skid Row self-titled debut record that I also bought, bought in the 90s. And sadly for those records, they were in storage for many years. And we had a basement flood at my house and they were kind of stuck together um, covers. I was able to pry them apart. And unfortunately, the back of the Skid Row album peeled up on the front of the ACDC album. So my covers for those two albums are not in great shape. But the good news is the vinyl was perfect. It was it was just fine. With a little cleaning up, it it looked and played amazing. So those were my first two records. In a matter of a couple months, I probably tripled my collection. Not much. Ten records maybe or so. And then things took off. I found Discogs. And I know a lot of you maybe use Discogs. And it's a great thing, but it's also a dangerous thing because you can find anything you want out there. And if you're willing to pay a certain price, you can get anything you want out there as well. And I started buying records and I I would buy things um, that were a deal. So I never really looked at it as a hobby to collect records. I'm not looking for you know, near mint, very good plus records every time. I'm just looking for my favorite music, my favorite artists, their catalogs, and filling out those catalogs. So I found myself buying, you know, six, seven, eight, nine records at a time, but they all would cost around two bucks a piece, three bucks a piece. I mean, I wasn't spending ridiculous amounts of money. I would put a $30 order in and I would probably have four or five $2 records and one that would cost me 15, 16, sometimes $20. But I would justify it that I got six records for 30 bucks and that comes out to less than $5 a record. And that was good by me. Um, And so I filled a lot of catalog in, in a short order, just by using discogs and finding those kind of deals. And I still do that. I still look for those kind of deals. And, you know, I have the records that I want in one list that I know I'm going to have to pay for. And what I try to do when I do find one that I really want is I'll try to find a place that's going to sell it that also has some other artists that I like that I'm not actively looking for their their catalog on but if they have them for two three dollars i can throw it on the order and kind of spread out my shipping costs so in that time from 2014 to today my record collection has grown from a mere two three records to now um set over 700 records in that time and to some that may not sound like um a lot and others it may sound like a ton um to me it's just a love of having my music on this medium so that's kind of where my road to vinyl records came into um And then I found some groups on Facebook that helped me with my passion. Great people out there uh, sharing the vinyl that they listen to and allowing me to share my records throughout the day. I'm lucky enough to be able to work from home, which allows me to also then spin many records in a day when I am not on meetings or phone calls and, and allow that background music to kind of take me away while I work. And it's been wonderful. I've been able to post the albums I'm listening to throughout the day and converse with people I don't know or strangers out there who are awesome about music and share a love and passion for music as I do and uh, and share that vinyl love as well. And it's been a, a treat. And so that's what kind of got me to start the blog that I started in the first place. And, I, you know, it's just a passion for me. I, I love it. And because of that, I'm able to be creative in a way that I haven't been in a long time. I I love writing, uh, so being able to blog um, is great, but I don't have a a ton of time to do it. So uh, this allows me to 
put some blogs out there to write to get my creative side going when I have available time on a topic that I really like to discuss. So there you have it. That's my road to vinyl record collection. Um, I would consider myself a vinyl record lover instead of a collector. I have a large collection of records, but I'm not out there trying to collect the most recent presses or the original presses or the high dollar presses of anything. I'm in this for the love of music. And if I have a single pressing of something, I'm happy with that. I just want to have my favorite songs on a format that I love, and that's vinyl records. So that's going to do it for episode one of Brian's Final Records, the podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. As I mentioned before, you can follow me. I'm at Brian's Vinyl Records on Instagram. I'm at Brian's Vinyl Records on Facebook. And on Twitter, I go by the handle My Vinyl Guy. And you can find me in all those places. Also, my blog is at Brian's Vinyl Records.blogspot.com. And I will hopefully be back with a new episode very soon. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, please, please subscribe and please give it a review on your favorite media, iTunes, Google Play, wherever you found it. Leave a review that allows people to find it easier and helps me get it out there to other people. I thank you again for listening and then final friends, until next time, keep spinning and enjoy that music. 